Hello everyone, welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo and today I would like to share with you God's words taken from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. But before then, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time, Lord, of devotional, this time of reflection. And we thank you for all that you have done to each and every one of us, all that you have done for each and every one of our families. And we thank you, Father, that this evening, God, the words that we will read will strengthen us, will change us, will make us a better person, will bring us closer to you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, this evening, I would like to share with you the story about Jesus and Zacchaeus. The story of Jesus and Zacchaeus, many of you might have heard it, but perhaps there are some of you who have never heard of this story before. And with that, let's read together from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeing to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, Half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Praise be to God. The story of Zacchaeus really reminds us of the fact that a true encounter with Jesus makes us a better person. A true encounter with Jesus will make each and every one of us a better person. A better father, a better mother, a better son, a better daughter, a better worker, a better employee, a better manager, a better entrepreneur and to be a person who can be a salt and a light and to bring a difference in this world. Today, we live in a world where there are so many pain, so many hurts, so many things that are discouraging, and so many people feel that they can't get better or they feel that there's no way that their future can be better, or that their past is so bad to the point where they just could not look back without any pain anymore. But Zacchaeus was a man who really had a dark past. And he not only had a dark past, but he was also at the time before his encounter with Jesus, a person who was considered a sinner. People in the community just didn't like him. They probably hated him, thinking he was a traitor for having worked for the Roman Empire at the time. But this story tells us that Jesus loves everyone. Jesus wants people to change. Today, it is as true as it was as in the days of Zacchaeus. 
Jesus is calling people to change, to come to Him. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus and be changed. Come to Jesus. Receive Him into your heart. Invite Him in as your Lord and Savior. And see your life change. Not only will your life be changed, but when you do so, the Bible says in the book of Romans, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Furthermore, the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I remember the late Pastor Billy Graham said that by the, the lives of the people that was changed by the Lord Jesus, He knows and He believes in Jesus Christ. He knows that the Lord is real, that God is real by the lives of the people that were changed. Today, your life too can be changed. Today, you can come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. As high as the heaven is from the earth, the east from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions, our sins from us. The story of Zacchaeus tells us another thing, which is the second thing. That when a person has a grateful heart, that person will become generous in spite of their circumstances. In this story, Zacchaeus was short. Zacchaeus was short to the point where he could not see Jesus unless he climbs up that tree, the sycamore tree. But can you imagine if Zacchaeus was a normal sized person, he wasn't so short, perhaps he'll just be one out of many people in the crowd. But because he was short, because of that, he had to come up to the sycamore tree. And because he stood out, having been in that tree, Jesus caught him. And Jesus told him that today I must come to your house. Or I must stay at your house. Isn't it amazing? Zacchaeus probably didn't think that Jesus would have accepted him. Probably he thought that he is just such a bad sinner, has done so many wrong things that perhaps Jesus didn't even want to be associated with him. But Jesus not only spent time to talk to Zacchaeus, but even went to his house. And that represents Zacchaeus, who at that time joyfully accepts. It tells us that we have to also open up our hearts and accept Jesus into our lives with a grateful heart, with a joyful heart. Zacchaeus could have said, no, Lord, I'm busy today. Lord, thank you. Can you please just pray for me and I'll be on my way. I'm too busy with tax work. But he did not do that. When Jesus called, he responded. He was grateful. And because he was grateful, because he knew Jesus loved him, and because he had accepted Jesus into his heart, he believed in Jesus, what did he do? He returned fourfold to anyone whom he may have defrauded. And half of his goods he gave to the poor. All of that happened after an encounter and a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you have a relationship with Jesus, you'll be more generous. And when you'll be more generous, then people will glorify the name of the Lord. The end of the story tells us that Jesus said, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. We can see by Zacchaeus' fruits 
by the actions that he had done, that he was a person who had received salvation. So the third thing that we learned today is that a safe person would reflect the love of God. It's a question if you, you encounter someone, they said, you know, hey, I believe in the Lord Jesus, I'm a Christian, but then their actions do not correspond with their words. Zacchaeus' words and his actions matched. Jesus wants us to be his sons and daughters who can be an example to this world. Perhaps you are a Christian or you call yourself a Christian. You've been a Christian all your life. But let me tell you, it's very important that you have a personal relationship with Jesus. And not just let it be a routine that you come to church. Let it be that every day, from Monday to Saturday to Sunday, that every day you have a relationship with Jesus. Read the Bible and put it into practice. Surround yourself with groups of people, people who love you, and especially even more, who love Jesus. Because those people will make you a better person, will sharpen you, and make you to the person that God has called you to be. How could that be? Because the Bible says, as sharpens sharpens iron, as iron sharpens iron, so a person sharpens another, or man sh sh sharpens another. Today, the three things that we learn from this story reminds us that a relationship with Jesus will make us to be such a person that when others see us, they will, they'll see and they'll say, that person is different. Why was Zacchaeus different at the time than the Pharisees? Because in the book of Leviticus, when you read that, it explains the fact that if a person had wronged another person and they'd like to make things right, what will happen? They would have to return whatever it is that they had defrauded the other person of, plus they have to add one-fifth, which is about 20%. So for example, if I had defrauded someone of $100, then I would have to add $20 on top of the $100, making it $120 to call it even. But here, what we saw was that Zacchaeus gave even more than he should. And fourfold, meaning he returned everything originally and plus triple the amount of the original. Isn't it amazing that our life, our relationship with Jesus will bring us into a whole new level that could not, we could not reach unless we have that relationship with Jesus. Isn't it amazing that when we invite Jesus into our lives as our, our Lord and Savior, we will then be able to have life beyond what this world can offer. The Bible says the years of our lives are 70, even by reason of strength, 80. So my brothers, my sisters, that means that the life we have in this world is temporary. But the life we will have in heaven is eternal. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven. My brothers and my sisters, anything that we can achieve in this earth is temporary. None of us will take it with us when we die. But praise be to God that in heaven there will be even better things than there are that are available in this world. Three things we learn from this story. One, the fact that a true encounter with Jesus will make us a better person. Two, a generous person became generous because of a grateful heart. And 
three. What did we learn about the third one? We learned that a relationship with Jesus will cause us to be a salt and a light in this world. How do you have a relationship with Jesus? First, accept Him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Second, put His teachings, His words, into practice. Today, if you have never received Lord Jesus into your heart, or you never make a personal decision to have a relationship with Jesus, would you open your hearts and pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, my brother and my sister, you have been born again. Join the church. Come to a church for a Bible study. Come for a Sunday service. Start that relationship with Jesus. If you've been a Christian and you've been going to church, but you feel you've never had that relationship before, start today. Put Jesus' teachings into practice. Lastly, I'd like to pray for everybody else. All the listeners who have been listening to this program. Let's pray together. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name, may you touch each and every one of the lives of the people who are listening. Anyone who are listening, those who are sick, Father, may you heal. Those who are in need of help, may you help them out, God. And right now, Father, we lift your name high. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you and we praise you. We know today our faith has grown, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the preached word of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you all.